Yeah. Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. My word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a time when, when the Earth stands still to, to celebrate Earth Day. Very different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you getting a nice view of Earth Day out your window? Sort of nice green there in the garden. Sky. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very, very lucky. I have a garden. I think this entire downtime of, you know, your daily walks out in nature, it's been very zen-like, hasn't, hasn't it? Just to appreciate what we've got around us and really the, the stories of how the earth is having a break right now. <laughs> is, it is. It's, it's catching its breath, isn't it? It's catching its breath and to be able to enjoy that and see that I mean we were laughing earlier but um my, my, when Earth Day I didn't realize this Earth Day has been celebrated since um oh, 1970 um and I think I only really thought about this or I was aware of this with the concert Live Earth in 2007 and so I went to this amazing concert with like Metallica, Foo Fighters, Madonna. I think I was one of two people that actually knew who Duran Duran were. <laughs> <laughs> I know this, somebody join me. Um, but, and at the time it was all about sort of switching off the lights and it didn't really, we had no impact. Like we, we knew what global warming was back then, um, but now we can see really what's happening to the world, the environment, um, and a much more, uh, it, with much more urgency. And actually just to spend this day um, in sort of like the quiet and doing things sort of through tech, there's there's quite a few articles which, you know, I can share um, that I've seen today about how to celebrate, well, you know, Earth Day, what to do, because we can't go out. But maybe- Yeah, I've seen quite a few interesting posts going out as well. So yeah, I'll be, there's some good stuff out there, so I'll share that. Yeah, we'll do. But there's loads we could do. But I think just today, to sort of enjoy the nature that we've got around us, is a very good start. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So we were going to talk about, um, as well, sort of how the a response to the crisis impacts your reputation. And, and this is a really a good one for you, Crystal. I know because you come from a PR background, so you're following a lot of what people are doing. So mm. I think... You know, there's been a lot of stories in the news, both good and bad, but I think a lot more good. Um, and I think people are do, coming from a place um, of really wanting to help people. Uh, just one of the small things that I've seen is people that have been furloughed and now from big agencies and stuff are coming together now to kind of help small businesses. It does make your and our, our job much tougher because, <laughs> if, if they, you know, they're sort of the big guys out there helping the little guys with huge amounts of experience and nothing. But um, I think it's fantastic that, you know, that they're actually using that time, using this time really while they're not working to just volunteer and help people. I mean, it's amazing. I, if anything, I am more um, encouraged and you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm proud, really, to see mm -hmm. how people are stepping up. Um, I think as well, when it comes to a crisis, um, because that's what we've been in. Like, I think when the news broke, you know, it is a crisis situation. You know, businesses have got to stop. And for many, that meant, what do we do with our staff? You know, the, the, how do we pay them? How is this going to all work? And as you were saying, there have been quite a few companies being highlighted in the media um, and their responses. And you know, I don't think I'm saying anything out of line when I mention them. But for example, you know, when you're looking at companies like your Amazons and um, your Sports Direct that are asking people to come in, you know, you have to come in and work because we've got to do delivery. <laughs> Um, but they're not really helping them in terms of protection, or at least there have been reports of that. Um, and again, it's, it's very hard to say because I think it's easier for media to talk about the reports. Um, and I'm sure there's no time to give a balanced account right now. So I kind of say this, but with the heck caveat of, you know, if there's any more news on this, just please let us know uh, and, and put that in because it was really interesting to see how um, when a crisis happens, there is that knee jerk reaction. And what I find is that it can really highlight what a company's true intentions are or like their true values, because we all say we have these wonderful values and we're about community. But actually, when it hits the fan, how are we really going to react speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, of course, it's a place of 
fear sometimes and you can be forgiven for a lot of mistakes if you know that you've done something wrong and you go to rectify it um but i think that some of these actions might have actually just amplified what that business is um views on sort of like how they treat their staff it's just amplified it even more um, I, I think so it has because i mean some of the ones you mentioned and there's a few more on top of that have got that kind of inbuilt within their business anyway you yeah. know having known people who've worked worked for, for both of them i think you're right i don't think their values and ethics are really that great in the first place and and this has just brought it even you know made it much more clearer really and they're coming under fire yes um but equally i thought i found was really interesting now i don't know the ins and outs of virgin for example of um virgin's businesses and richard branson you don't know what goes on behind the scenes because we can all have an opinion can't we but we don't mm -hmm. really see what is on the balance sheet and um he was really under fire now whilst he's not somebody that um, you know, I, I, from every, we all, we all respect Richard Branson as this entrepreneur and we love the fact that he's different. And for me, I was a bit surprised to see him attacked because I always understood that he had, you know, a, a very good community around him and the way that, you know, the businesses worked. I thought, oh, well, this is interesting. What, what do I not know? Um, and there are a, a couple of instances in the media about how he um, has handled staffing issues the fact that surely you're rich enough you can pay for it yourself like why are you getting the bailouts and then also um, I think his lawsuit with the NHS was a big um, focal point and I think, I yeah I think that has really not helped helped him because of the current situation um, you know just what I've heard, heard in the news as well was that he, he's asked for a 500 million pound bailout from the government but he doesn't pay tax here um, and then he's he's got his he said he would put up his island in the Caribbean as collateral, and I thought, well, why don't you just sell the island? <laughs> well, it's it's really interesting. And it's probably a lot more complicated than that, and it's yeah. this team around him telling him what to do, isn't it? Well, but, I think as well, like yeah. again, there, there's two of us that really don't know what what it is. But what I thought the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because he did an open letter to his staff, which I thought was really interesting because. Okay. Um, when I've been watching this crisis sort of like unfold, um, you're seeing businesses that are more that are more concerned in how they're being portrayed rather than actually speaking to their teams internally. So his open letter to his staff actually outlined every single point, um, and quite frankly, like you know, it's 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 true in business, and I think um, we we look at someone's value, but that was based before the <laughs> before COVID hit. So you know, Lord knows what his value is going to be like right now. Um, the fact is he doesn't have this cash sitting in the bank. Um, the fact that it is, it, he kind of addressed the points as in um, it is a loan. It's a commercial loan. We'll be repaying this back. Yeah, um, which is why the island was being put as collateral. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, he talked about the NHS because, again, I was quite um, disappointed about the whole NHS situation. But then again, everything that he had um, been awarded through that uh, through that court process, he's actually put back into the NHS. He's given it directly back. He's taken no profits. But again, it just goes to show whatever you might think, there might be more stories behind it. I might still not, you know, we don't know 100% what, what's going on in the company. But what I found really interesting was that he didn't rush to the media to try and justify all of this. He thought, who are the most important people I mean, I can only imagine like this, this to me was a really good exercise. Who is the most important, who are the most important people in my company? It's my staff. So he wrote that letter to them. And mm -hmm. I thought, actually, that's very clever. And, I, you know, I, that is something that I would imagine was him that wanted to do that because the way he's dealt with media, the way that he's dealt with communication has always been quite impressive, whether or not you like him or you don't, it has been quite impressive. Um, so I thought that was really interesting to see how that works. And so from, from the sort of like learnings of how to manage a crisis, I think 
two important, like really important points that I would love to flag up and urge anyone to really understand is that crisis situation, you don't have to be in a crisis to prepare and you could take some really good lessons. Um, I saw a really interesting um, tourism case example um, and Jean-Marc von Baer, who I'm actually going to, he, he used to do the PR for Sri Lanka and he was talking about when the floods um, hit, it was sort of obviously natural disaster um, mm -hmm. and in Haiti as well, like how how to work through a crisis and pull everyone together and I thought blimey that's so good so I'm going to share that because I don't it doesn't matter what industry you're in it's almost like who do you liaise with what are the collaborations how can you help people what's the priority and get that into your head first before you start doing the knee-jerk reactions and putting profit over people um, but then also the other thing was that in a crisis we've seen like you said some wonderful businesses who um, Oh, I'm just looking at the time, but some really wonderful businesses that have really come to the, the forefront of just doing things naturally and authentically. Um, <laughs> raise my eyes at the word. I like our text situation earlier on. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, keeping it real, people, keeping it real. But just well, do it. it is. And I think, you know, if it's one thing that it's done, I mean, I've been wanting to do live video and video for about three four years I mean I've been saying yes I'll get on next week next week next month you know making all the excuses in the world and everything and it's kind of just thrown me in the deep end there so that's the benefit that is that has come out of it and I think just picking up on your point they're sort of saying about you know rather than the fear focus on something positive and it's really hard because I've spoken to a few people they're really struggling with the situation their business is gone they struggling to focus they were just getting things started up and now it's just all shut down and it's like where do I go from here um and it's you know it can be really really hard um and then you you know you're isolated at home and everything as well on top of that so and I found that just trying to maybe help other people is actually helping me so yeah it's just getting out there and help so you know if you have to go and volunteer somewhere or help you know deliver things you know get involved in the COVID groups or you know just send an email out to your client saying how you can help or get online and just offer some services you know even you know people will remember that and I think they'll come back to you and also you can't do it by yourself like you know no one's expecting you to so find your groups find people like talk to people speak to coaches you know um, like you say there are some amazing people that because they have been furloughed <laughs> they can give that time for free fine you know if that that's the case um mm -hmm. i personally don't agree like with like I, i'm not going to give too much like some of my things like certain clients we've just had a quick chat that's fine but there are certain services that, you know, I can do a reduced offer for, which I have done. Um, but otherwise, the amount of work and value that I put in to help you get through this is a value and the same for you. Um, so, you know, I think that definitely reach out, find who you need, um, and but just take a moment. And I think there is something really special in the fact that when you are not from a place of fear and you just, uh, it sounds uh, easier said than done but when it comes to that point of acceptance and you can almost lean into it and just go right okay it is what it is uh what can I do and once you start doing that but what can I do right now rather than waiting for something else because that's just going to leave you constantly feeling like anxious waiting for something to save you um it is a case of yeah but what's the one thing that I can do um and I think that you know looking at how people are reacting at that um and, and perhaps again from that place of fear or from that place of can we help someone what can we do to save our business how do we look after our teams that's always a good step isn't it i mean sometimes for people that are on their own just looking after their kids and their family is just the best thing yeah, it is that could be the property or just you know looking after your mental well-being so making sure that you you know you you're getting creative doing starting to do something creative you've always wanted to i know a client who's going back to university now she's a career coach i just just saw a post of hers on linkedin um to restudy which i think is fantastic um there was there was another client of mine who runs food tours in Cambridge um, and that's shut down now. So she's focusing on her allotment and getting the, you know, a lot of people, new people are coming to the allotment now and she's managing that. So she's, you know, she's fi find that all exciting. So it's about adapting as well, isn't it? And it's just thinking, well, actually, what, what can I, what else can I do different? Let me just explore for a bit. I've never had the time to do this. So 
let's you know let's just explore um you know i'm still keeping quite busy with work and i'm quite jealous of the people that have got, that have got nothing to do because they can explore their passions or you know or start teaching themselves something or learning something that they've been wanting to do for ages and i've got things on the backbone i just haven't got the time to do it so um i think yeah sort of just embracing it and yeah, as you say getting out there to you know reaching out to people i mean i've had again if you you can't afford it and the other person can't come up to come to some arrangement like skill swaps so i've done a few of um you know a few skill swaps with people obviously it's got to be someone that you want something in return it, it must be a value because otherwise it can go horribly wrong so just make sure when you do do a trade or skill swap that you're really happy with what you're getting in return and vice versa and then um, we'll, I would say really limit that number because the amount I would of because if it yeah when it comes to it you know when it gets busy again as well you're doing all you're doing is trade and you've got nothing coming in and at the end of the day we've got to pay rent you've got to pay bills you've got to buy food yeah. you know what I mean so <clears throat> absolutely I do I do limit it and I am quite specific with people I do it with and I tend to do it on an hour to hour basis as well just to make it fair on both sides but um but yeah, all the, I mean, I've heard of other things where people have just gone, well, okay, well, let's spread payments over six months rather than just a full on upfront payment now, or, you know, maybe reducing the fee now and increasing it later, you know, we're spreading it out over a longer time and you have all the work done now, but you pay that over a year. So there's various different ways you can still Very do nice stuff. Yeah, but it depends on the person. I mean, <clears throat> some things I'm happy to do that with people, other things, you know, you know i can't or I'll, I'll limit it so it just depends on your business and how you want to operate good. Um, yeah good i think we've we've gone a little bit over but we had a few technical difficulties so. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah. is there anything you want to add to just to finish off oh just urging people go outside like look at the sky you know just see a sky that hasn't got or well, particularly where oh, i yeah, am about 60 satellites going across well, it well, yeah, I was about to say at the moment, I haven't got so many airplanes sort of over my, like some sort of like in that flight pathway. So I'm just going to enjoy the quietness, listen to the birds, like just try and enjoy Earth Day for a little bit more. Um, and I think, yeah, I'll, I'll post some stuff more about crisis as well, a bit more in depth stuff. Um, so we can share as well. Fantastic. But I, yeah. And I think you said there was a blog or a video that the guy from Sri Lanka did. He just posted actually, uh, Jean Marc. Um, he did yeah. a brilliant talk, so um, I'm going to post that and share that. I, I asked him if it was okay, um, and he said absolutely. So I just want to tell you how to do So good, uh, good. Well, I'll yeah, if you share it on yours and then I'll share it across to my post as well, so I think that'll be really helpful for people. I just had a message actually from one lady, and she's hoping to do an Earth Day live later on today. Um, oh, Helen wow. Hughes, she worked and traveled before. Um, oh, and how we might like to travel in the future. So, Ooh. yeah, Helen Youngman traveled. Yeah, she's really sort of focused on the eco side of things. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, this has had a massive impact on her as well. So I think that will really help. Yeah, that, that article might be really interesting to her as well. And I think, yeah, it would be good actually to get her on one of our, as a guest. I would love to have her views on how travel's going to look in the future because it's one of those things that we, I think we all need for the soul. We need to, we need to expand our horizons, visit other cultures, cultures understand, you know, what's outside of our little bubble, but it is perhaps, you know, the practices that are in place now um, and how commercial it, it has become. I would love to see what the ideal blueprint would be and whether or not, we can do some significant changes um, yeah so you i know if you, you're listening helen <laughs> we'll be yeah. in touch about getting you on the show all <laughs> right well um yeah well thanks it's lovely to see you again for a uh, coffee and a chat and small yeah. biz discussion and your wisdom and pearls of wisdom shall i say so, um, <laughs> And if you have any questions, guys, if there are any subjects that you want to go through or you want us to chat about or you just, you know, again, reach out. We're, we're doing this so that people don't feel so isolated and they've got like a 15 minute break to just chat with someone and, you know, just talk about things. So if you have a question, just by all means, drop it, you know, give us a, a DM or drop it in the comments. And yeah, absolutely.